So, the second day of our Kirtan Mela. So, we'll just continue with the verses that are here in the series of verses. Hmm. Well, wow, this next verse doesn't have a purport in the verse after. Okay. that one <laughs> a longy but we'll do we'll do the first one om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So this is Sri Sukha Uvacha. Iti Stusta Samstu Vata. Satasmin Agramar Sanhe. Radura sit Kuru Shresta, Bhagavan Bhakta Vatsalaha, Sri Sukha Uvacha, Iti Susta Samstu Vataha, Satasmin Agramar Sanheim, Pradura sit Kuru Shresta, Bhagavan Bhakta Vatsalaha, Sri Sukha Uvacha, Iti Susta Samstu Vata, Satasminagam Harsanhe. Radura sit Kuru Shresta, <coughs> Bhagavan Bhakta Vatsalaha, Ladies, Sri Sukha Vacha, Sri Sukha Vacha, Iti Sutta Samstuta Vacha, Iti Sutta Samstuta Vacha, Sattva Sri Nath. 
I'll just read the translation. Sri Sukadeva Goswami said, <coughs> The personality of Godhead Hari, who is extremely affectionate to his devotees, was very pleased by the prayers offered by Daksha. And thus he appeared at the holy place known as Agamarsana. O oh, Maharaj Prikshit, best of the Kuru dynasty, the Lord's lotus feet rested on the shoulders of his carrier Garuda, and he appeared with eight long, mighty, beautiful, very beautiful arms. In his hand he held a disc, conch shell, sword, shield, arrow, bow, rope, and club. And in each hand a different weapon, all brilliantly shining. His garments were yellow and his body bodily hue, deepish blue. His eyes and face were very cheerful, and from his neck to his feet hung a very long garland of flowers. His chest was decorated with a kustuba jewel and the mark of Srivats. On his head was a gorgeous round helmet, and his ears were decorated with earrings resembling sharks. All these ornaments were, were uncommonly beautiful. The Lord wore a golden belt on his waist, bracelets on his arms, rings on his fingers, and ankle belts on his feet. Thus decorated by various ornaments, Lord Hari, who is attractive to all living entities of the three worlds, is known as Purushottam, the best personality. He is accompanied by great devotees like Narada, Nanda, and all the principal demigods, led by the heavenly king Indra, and the residents of the various upper planet systems, such as Siddhaloka, Gandharvaloka, and Charnaloka. Situated on both sides of the Lord and behind him as well, these devotees offered him prayers continuously. That's the translation. I'll read it again, and this time when I read it, just meditate on the form of the Lord that's being described. This is a meditation, and you can actually actually go into an absorption into the transcendental feature of the Lord's existence through the meditation on this description. Okay, I'll read it again. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is extremely affectionate to his devotee, was very pleased by the prayers of Daksha, and thus he appeared at the holy place known as Agamarsana. O Maharaj Prikshit, best of the Kuru dynasty, the Lord's lotus feet rested on the shoulder of his carrier Garuda, and he appeared with eight long, mighty, very beautiful arms. In his hand he held a disc, conch shell, sword, shield, arrow, bow, rope, and club, and in each hand a different weapon, all brilliantly shining. His garments were yellow, and his bodily hue deepish blue. His eyes and face were very cheerful, and from his neck to his feet hung, hung a long garland of flowers. His chest was decorated with a kastuba jewel in the mark of the Srivats. On his head was a gorgeous, gorgeous round helmet, and his ears were decorated with earrings resembling sharks. All these ornaments were uncommonly beautiful. The Lord wore a golden belt on his waist, bracelets on his arms, rings on his fingers, and ankle bells on his feet. Thus decorated by various ornaments, Lord Hari, who is attractive to all living entities of the three worlds, is known as Purushottam, the best personality. He was accompanied by great devotees like Narada, Nanda, and all the principal demigods led by the heavenly king Indra and the residents of the various upper planetary systems such as Siddhaloka, Gandharvaloka, and Charnaloka. Situated on both sides of the Lord and behind him as well, these devotees offered him prayers continuously. Beautiful, beautiful description of the Lord's transcendental body with all his decorations. Next verse. Seeing that wonderful and evulgent form of the Lord, the Supreme Lord Personality of Godhead, Pradhapati Daksha, was first somewhat afraid 
But then he was pleased to see the Lord, and he fell to the ground like a stick to offer his respects to the Lord. As rivers are filled by water flowing from a mountain, all of Daksha's senses was filled with pleasure. Because of his highly elevated happiness, Daksha could not say anything but simply remained flat on the ground. Prabhupada's purport. When one actually realizes or sees the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is filled with complete happiness. For example, when Dhruva Maharaj saw the Lord in his presence, he said, Swamin kartauti smin smi varam nayache. My dear Lord, I have nothing to ask from you. Now I am completely satisfied. Similarly, when Prajapati Daksha saw the Supreme Lord in his presence, he simply fell flat, unable to speak or ask anything from him. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobis Dham Stapti Dham Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadam Mayam Dadanti Swapadanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Kodamani Pajarine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Satarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasati Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So how is it possible that personalities such as the six Goswamis of Vrindavan and persons who are on the same level could write pastimes of the Lord in very descriptive detail with so many embellishments of ornamentations describing the Lord's pastimes. How is it possible? The possibility is that they were seeing the Lord. They were seeing the Lord through their meditation on the Lord. And in that seeing, Krishna's pastimes were happening right in their mind. Just like you watch TV and you see some electronic device putting pictures in front of you and, and you're absorbed. And then, that, then you see what is on the box. So in the same way, this is like transcendental TV. So what am I saying is that actually this is the highest stage of bhakti. When one enters into the state of Krishna's pastimes right within their own existence. In other words, this is the result of chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> By purifying the heart through chanting the, the holy names of the Lord, one goes dif through different stages of realizing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. What are those different stages? The first stage is one realizes that Krishna's name is Krishna. <laughs> There's no difference. The holy name, Nama Chintamani Krishna's Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha, Purnya Sudya Nitya Mukta Abhinna Tvam Nami Nami Nau. Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. It's in this verse from the Padma Purana. It nicely exp explains some of the characteristics of the holy name. And it explains that the holy name is none different than Krishna. <laughs> when Srila Prabhupada was coming to one temple in the old days of the Hare Krishna movement back in the USA, the devotees wanted to do something nice for Prabhupada. So what they did, Prabhupada's quarters were located up on the second floor. So Prabhupada had to go up the stairs to get to his quarters. So they decided to paint the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra on the stairs. Each stair having a particular name. First stair was Hare, next step stair was Krishna, like that. So 16 steps up, the whole Hare Krishna Mantra. When Prabhupada came to the temple, he looked, stopped, and would not walk on those stairs. <laughs> 
he says you paint over them and before and he he didn't go to his quarters until that was done because he knows that the name of Krishna is Krishna <laughs> you can't walk on Krishna <laughs> So this is an, an example from the negative point of view how a great soul understands how Krishna appears in the form of his name. So his name is him. When one devotee was giving class in America, a very senior sannyasi, one of the oldest devotees that joined Srila Prabhupada, his name was Satchrup Maharaj. And he was giving class and Srila Prabhupada was sitting there. Can you imagine giving class with Prabhupada sitting there listening to you? <laughs> I can't. I would just, you know, shrink into the seat. <laughs> just cry. <laughs> it's just like, wow, what would you do? But he was giving class. And so at one point he said, Krishna is in his name. And Prabhupada stopped him and said, Where in his name is he? <laughs> Krishna is not in his name, he is his name. <laughs> How much do we realize that? That's a matter of purification of the heart. And that purification of the heart comes through the chanting of the holy name. Through by chanting the holy names we become purified. As we purify, then the, the holy name reveals itself more and more to the chanter. And then one can realize, yes, Krishna is none different than his name. His name is Krishna. So as one goes through the process of purification, one first realizes that Krishna's name is Krishna. We understand it by theoretical concept. We hear it in the Shastras. We read it and we hear people speaking it. But how much do we actually realize that Krishna's name is Krishna? Nam Nam Akardi Bahuda Nija Sarva Shaktis Nija Sarva Shaktis indicates all the potencies of the Supreme Personality of God and the Absolute Truth, the Sunam Bonam, the highest principle in existence. Everything is there within Krishna's name. <laughs> Krishna's name is Krishna. So when we're chanting the holy names, do we have that understanding? But that's the understanding we want, because when we glorify the holy name, we want to understand that there's no better way to glorify the Supreme Personality of God than chant His holy name. And by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in this age, He has empowered that name with His own mercy. What is that mercy? That we can all reach the highest platform of spiritual attainment through chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> Wasn't possible in other ages. People could chant Hare Krishna, but they couldn't reach the highest. Only Mahaprabhu has added his, what we say, Adalya. Adalya means mercy. That's supreme mercy. So those who take up the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra with enthusiasm, seriously, they attract the attention of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And by that attention, the Lord reveals more and more of His mercy through the process of chanting the Holy Name. It's more than just our efforts in chanting. That brings about the mercy, but the mercy is the manifestation that brings about the realization that Krishna's name is Krishna. Non different than Krishna. So this is the mood. The mood is to go more and more deeper. We want that taste, the ruchi. Srila Hari Das Thakur was chanting 333,333 names of God every day, 192 rounds. And he still had time to preach. <laughs> he still had time to preach. So this was, he was on the platform of Sudanam. There is Nam Aparad, there is Namabas, and there is Sudanam. Three stages of chanting. Nam Aparad is that when we're chanting, we're still afflicted and affected by the offenses that come within the process of chanting. So how do you get rid of those offenses? To be conscious of the offenses and carefully try to avoid those offenses in the process of chanting the holy names of the Lord. Gradually, when one makes an effort to very carefully distance themselves from all those, chant, those 
as aparad, one reaches Namabas. And in the Namabas, one can start to taste the sweetness of the holy name. That sweetness is increased more and more as the chanting goes on, as we purify our heart through the chanting. And Sudanam means you're chanting and you just don't stop. <laughs> you just don't want to stop. You can't stop, <laughs> even if you wanted to. <laughs> because you know there's nothing higher than that. You forget about everything else, your, your body and whatever else is related to that, and you just chant. <laughs> what was that... Uh, Yeah, there was one, there was one devotee, very elevated devotee. He couldn't stop chanting. And so he was mistakenly thinking that if I go to the latrine, the dirty place to take care of nature, what am I going to do? I have to bring the holy name there. That's not good. The holy name is pure. That's such a dirty place. So in order to stop himself from chanting, he started to grab his tongue so he could stop chanting forcibly. While he's walking to take care of business, a little boy comes up. He's about 10 years old. His name is Gopal. And the boy says, What are you doing, Baba? He said, The holy name is pure, and I have to go to take care of nature. And I don't want to bring the pure holy name in such a place. The boy said, the holy name is not affected by anything of this material world, either pure or unpure. Apravitra, apravitra, va. Either way, it's purified. it purifies all the holy place. And sometimes we say, when the sun goes on a puddle of urine, it changes that puddle, takes out the urine, and makes that puddle a puddle of water. And so the sun is powerful. It can purify something material. So what to speak of Krishna, who is the son of the sun? <laughs> he is the light of that sun that becomes the sun <laughs> and makes that sun exist and give purifying power to the material energy. So Krishna's name cannot be, when we say, anywhere connected to anything material. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was listening as that boy Gopal was instructing this this elderly man, he was... And so, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, What is your name, boy? You are actually a preacher of the holy name. He said, My name is Gopal. He said, I give you another name. You are now known as Gopal Guru. You are the guru of the holy name. Because you are teaching the higher principles of the process of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. As Yila Prabhupada says, when you're actually chanting Hare Krishna, you'll think 16 rounds. Why 16? Why not 16,000? <laughs> So we want to come to that stage, and it's available for everyone to get to that stage of constantly chanting the holy name in relish. So, but we have to practice this chanting very carefully and do one other thing, very, very careful. These two formula, these two things bring about that chanting, even if you do nothing else. One is serve Vaishnavas. If you're always in the mood to look for opportunities to serve the devotees, like this one devotee, where is he? He's right here with the brown shirt. Every time the, all the stuff from the altar comes, was it the, the ghee lamp or the water, the flower, he grabs it and he goes to every devotee and goes around like that. And I was thinking, wow, that's nice. He's got such a nice, enthusiastic, surface attitude. And he makes sure everyone gets the lamp. Nobody misses. And the water. And the flower. <laughs> so that is the mood. A devotee wants to serve, and wants to serve in the best possible way. And the best way to serve is to serve the Vaishnavas. So this service attitude, along with the chanting of the holy names, both have to be there, brings about more and more sweetness that Krishna reveals Himself through the name more and more and more. So we want that. And as I mentioned in the beginning, 
the Goswamis were seeing Krishna's pastimes. They were actually visualizing, and sometimes they would see themselves within the pastime. They would become a part of Krishna's leelas and take part in assisting Krishna in his leelas. As they were watching the leelas, they were watching themselves. This is a very elevated stage of existence. I mean, Rupa Goswami is Rupa Manjari. He is a very, he's an assistant of Radharani in the spiritual world. Raghunath Das Goswami is Rati Manjari. He is a personal servant of Radharani. He takes care of all her bodily needs and bodily de He decorates her. He gives her so many things. He's, these are so intimate, great souls who have such association. But when they come to this material world, they show us, they teach us by their example how to attain the highest stage of spiritual realization through this process. So from realizing Krishna's name was realizing Krishna's form. That Krishna's form is non-different. It says that when a person looks at the altar and sees the deity, there's three ways you can see the deity. One, as an, uh, something made of stone, wood, or some kind of material metal, and has been placed there for worship. That is called the material concept, or material consciousness. Higher than that is to think that the deity is a representative of the Lord, and therefore we're worshiping the deity who is the form of the Lord, but as a representation of the Lord. And then what the highest and the realization and the perfection of that understanding is that the deity is Krishna, non-different. <laughs> Absolute. Abhinam. Abhinam means without difference, differentiation. So the deity is all. When you realize that, that Krishna is his form also. He's non-different than his form. That's Krishna there. Many stories where deities are talking, deities are walking, deities are doing so many things. <laughs> there was one deity in South India. There was one... Um, he was a, uh, what was it? What are those South Indian saints known? Alvars. He was one of the 12 Alvars. There are 12 great saints that had appeared in South India. Their lives are so beautiful, so deep in devotion. So one of them, but one of them was an untouchable. He wasn't allowed in the temple. But he wanted to see the deity. So he went to the back part of the temple where there was a little window that was behind the deity. And he would view the deity from the window from behind. He couldn't see the front. So he would do this every day. One day the deity turned around <laughs> just to see his devotee. <laughs> and that deity stayed in that position. And now that deity is like that. He's turning around looking at his devotee. <laughs> So Krishna loves his devotee so much that when the devotee has so much devotion and eagerness to see this, the Lord or to serve the Lord, the Lord goes out of his way to actually fulfill the devotee's desires. Like that. There was another Alvar. He used to come every day into the temple and worship the deity so nicely. He was famous. And uh, he would just sit there and sing beautiful, beautiful songs, glorifying the Lord. One day the king in the area heard, Oh, this is a great saint. He's sitting in the temple and he's glorifying. I want to meet him. So when the word came to the saint that the king wants to see you, please come. He says, I'm not leaving here. <laughs> I'm not leaving the deity to see some worldly person. <laughs> he was thinking like that. He didn't say that. In other words, he refused to go see the king. So the king became angry and told his guards, you now forcibly force him out of the temple. He has to leave the city. He cannot stay here. So they came and they forced him out of the temple. He's walking out of the temple. He's going down the road and the deity comes out of the temple and is following him. <laughs> yeah. 
So he's going down, and the deity's going down, and the people are saying, wow, if the deity leaves, and he's leaving, we're leaving. So all the people in the city started to leave. <laughs> and then the king, when he got the word, what was happening, he said, all right, bring him back, bring him back. <laughs> I made a mistake, I'm sorry. <laughs> so this was his devotion. He had such devotion that the Lord couldn't think, I, don't, I want to be with my devotee. And he's, he's leaving, so I'm going... <laughs> So there are many, many beautiful stories how the Lord reciprocates with His devotee in the form of a deity. So we should always look. When we see the altar, we should, that is Panchatattva. As Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda is there, Gadvaita, Gadadhar, Srivast, they're all there. But where we can realize more and more when we meditate on, on them with devotion. And the next stage is to realize Krishna's transcendental qualities. What are the qualities of Krishna? Krishna has unlimited qualities. As Krishna is unlimited, his qualities are unlimited. So to realize those qualities, or at least some of the qualities, is the higher step than there's a name, the form, the qualities. So to realize Krishna's qualities how much he loves his devotees, what is his nature, how he exhibits that nature with his devotees. These are all the characteristics and qualities of Krishna. That's the stage of realization. It comes by chanting Hare Krishna. It comes by chanting Hare Krishna. And the last stage is the one I started with, and that is the Goswamis. And those are on that level. They were entering into Krishna's pastimes taking part in the Leelas themselves, writing books, describing what they were meditating on. And these books became what we say, what we realize or what we, what we learn as the pastimes of the Lord. They're not some imagination. They're actually visualizations of people who have the acumen, spiritual acumen, to actually go into the spiritual realm even while they're in this material body. It all comes by chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> so through the name, the name comes through the name, the form comes through the form, the qualities come, and the highest stage is Krishna's leelas. When Krishna's leelas manifest and devotee has all has reached the stage of perfection. We may not reach that stage in this in this body. It's a very high stage, but it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. When we carefully and regularly develop attachment and attention and devotion for chanting. So chant as much as possible. Sixteen rounds, Prabhupada said, that was concession. <laughs> When he first started, he said, all the devotees chant 64 rounds. That's what he started. That was the thing he gave for the Hare Krishna movement. We'd have to chant 64 rounds a day. But devotees were not going along with that. <laughs> so they said, Srila Prabhupada, we can't do that. It's too much. We have so many other things. And Prabhupada said, all right. 32. He said 32. And then there was more, you know, you know, uh, resistance. And finally Prabhupada said 16 and no less. <laughs> 16 and no less. And then later on, after the movement started, he said, I gave you 16 rounds and you can't even do that. Why? Because we have no taste. Why we have no taste is because we don't understand the, the, the value of chanting Hare Krishna. You get the taste by chanting. Just keep chanting, 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 and the taste will come. Gradually, gradually, gradually. The rounds become sometimes a burden, a chore, difficult, want to do something else, can't wait till they're over. But that shouldn't be the mood. The mood should be, let me chant more and more. Let me pray to Krishna and ask for his mercy so I can chant his name with more attention and more enthusiasm. 
and pray. Pray to the name, pray to Lord Chaitanya, pray to Srila Prabhupada, pray to your spiritual master. These prayers open up the mercy of the Holy Name more and more and becomes more and more available through their mercy. It says that if one thinks of a great soul, one gets 100% of this, the spiritual power of that soul just by thinking of that soul. That's a verse from the Pancharatrika. Just by thinking of Srila Prabhupada, you get one hundredth of the potency of his, spirit, his, his power, spiritual power. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. So any great soul like that. So there we have the, the means to purify ourselves, and we have to take advantage of that and offer nice prayers and become more and more eager to chant the holy names of the Lord. And yesterday I decided to go to all the kirtans. Sometimes I miss a few kirtans and uh, do other things. But I said, this weekend I'm going to go to every kirtan. I don't care who's singing, whether they can sing or not sing. I'm just going to go to all of them. Just, now you have to make sure I do it now. If you see me doing something else, say, hey, what are you doing? Go back in there. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to, uh, why? Because I, uh, in my experiment when doing that, I always find that the, I don't really appreciate a devotee singing until I actually sit there and take part in the kirtan. And it becomes wonderful. Yesterday was really wonderful. Everyone who sang was so not, was so powerful that by the end of the evening, everybody was dancing. <laughs> Everyone was dancing because the energy was so good yesterday. So that'll be another day like today. <laughs> so this is the highest thing. I was reading in the life of... One great soul, like Kinshita Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj, who chanted 24 hours a day, either Kirtan or Japa. But the narration in the book was that <clears throat> people are going now to Kirtan Melas, traveling very far to be there, right? Some of you have come a long distance just to be in Kirtan Melas. <clears throat> but when Prabhupada was here, every day <laughs> in the temples, morning and night there were kirtans going on nobody traveled anywhere they just stayed in their respective temples and had kirtan every night and in the morning programs and during the day they were out on sankirtan doing harinam sankirtan so nobody had to go anywhere because there was no place to go <laughs> it was right there so we have somehow lost that in our temples and now we have programs to do that <laughs> So we won't, but these programs are wonderful because it should give us a, a nice jump start and where we can chant more and more during the regular days of the year. We don't have to have special times just for kirtan. As I mentioned yesterday, in one, there's one verse in the um, Chaitanya Charitamrita where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's at the house of Advaita Charya. He stayed there for one month. He left Navadweep on his way to Puri, eventually after taking sannyas. He left all his devotees. His devotees were brokenhearted. Mahaprabhu is going. You can't imagine the feelings of the devotees when Lord the Lord left their association. Just to see him brought great happiness. And just to not see him, they were in anxiety. And they were always thinking about him when he was not there and always and always associating him with great enthusiasm when he was there. But now he's leaving for good, going to Jagannath Puri and living there as a sannyasi. And so now they... But Lord Chaitanya knew that all the devotees were feeling great separation, so he stayed another month in the house of Advaita Acharya. And for one month, they, all they did was kirtan and talk about... Krishna's pastimes, that's all. For one full month, from morning to night, was mornings, some kirtan, some the prasadam was there, of course. Advaita's wife was such a good cook, she would cook for the devotees. Sachi Madhya, when she heard, oh, her son is not leaving, he's at the house of Advaita Charya, she ran there. And she said, I'm cooking for him, nobody else is. 
she had such love for her son. She couldn't bear not to cook for him. So everyone was there, all the devotees gathered for one month. And in the evening they would do kirtan for hours and hours and hours. And no one had to go to bed. Sometimes they would just forget about sleeping. It would just go on. And then after one month, Lord Chaitanya decided to leave. And then he's leaving. And everyone's in anxiety. You know, no matter how long he promises to stay, still nobody's satisfied. They want him to stay longer. <laughs> this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Had that. The devotees had such love for him. So now he's going. The Dwaita Chari is following and saying, you can't go. <laughs> Come back, stay longer. So the Lord turned around and came back and stayed for another week and did more kirtan and more Krishna kata. And then in that narration of this extra week, it's mentioned that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did kirtan every night with all his devotees. And Srila Prabhupada writes that this is this what we should immediately do in all our centers. Immediately we should adopt having three hours of kirtan every night in every one of our temples all around the world. <laughs> it's in the purport. Srimada Chite Tanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila chapter 3 verse 203 in the purport. You can read it. And in that purport Prabhupada says we must adopt this immediately and have kirtan because this is our life and this is our life when there's kirtan i told i told one story how two very senior devotees in our hari krishna movement they didn't get along they both had good positions and had a lot of influence and had many devotees working under them couldn't get along with each other so there was a big kirtan one day, and so many devotees came, and both of them came to the kirtan. And so the kirtan's going on, and it's, everyone's chanting and dancing nicely. And so one of them is on one side of the room, and the other one's on the other side, because <laughs> they didn't get along. <laughs> So now the kirtan's going, and finally devotees are in a big circle, and the devotees are dancing in the circle, and there's devotees around in the circle. So one of them comes on one end of the circle, and one goes to the other, making sure they're on opposite sides. <laughs> so then the kirtan's going on, so one very senior devotee, he understood that there was some problem between these two senior devotees, so he decided to make a little solution. <laughs> So he grabs one of them and starts dancing with him in the middle of the circle. So he's dancing with one of them. And now they're dancing, dancing, dancing. And the kirtan's going on. And he's going closer to the other devotee as he's dancing purposely. And then finally when he gets to the other devotee, he pulls him in. And the three of them are dancing. <laughs> And all of a sudden, they're, da he's, they're dancing together. And then he leaves and pushes both of them together. And now they're embracing each other in the kirtan. <laughs> and they just kept dancing. That was the end of the problem. <laughs> that was, just see what kirtan does. <laughs> Destroys all problems. <laughs> Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj would say, if there's any problem, chant Hare Krishna. That's all. If there's any question, just chant Hare Krishna, you'll get the answer. <laughs> Prabhupada also said that. If you just chant Hare Krishna, all your questions will be answered. Yeah. <laughs> well, we may not fully believe that, but try it. <laughs> you'll see. So this is the panacea. Prabhupada uses that word panacea. Panacea means the solution for all problems. And that is chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. But we can't do that unless we get a taste. So you have to go for that taste. You have to fight for that taste. Once you get the taste, then it becomes natural to chant more and more and more. So go for the taste. The taste is available. It's sweet. It's very sweet because Krishna's name is so merciful and so full of all Krishna's qualities that just a little 
Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says, I'm standing on the ocean of the shore of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes and I'm trying to tr taste one drop of that ocean and that drop is enough to drown the whole world in love of God. Just one drop. Imagine what the whole ocean is like. So this, this, this Krishna consciousness movement is powerful. It is the spiritual world manifested in the material world. And by the grace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and spread by the grace of his pure devotee, Srila Prabhupada, and their, his assistants. So take advantage of this and chant more and more. Dive deeply into the holy name. Don't worry if you don't have a taste. Go for it anyway. <laughs> The taste will come. If you push yourself, you'll find the taste comes after some time. But if you look for immediate taste, sometimes it's not there. <laughs> it's not there. And real kirtan is not about melodies, styles, singing abilities. It's about bhakti. When the bhakti is there in the kirtan, then the kirtan is pleasing to Krishna and all the devotees become attracted to take part. So we want that. We want nice singing. We also want nice uh, musical melodies. We also want, I mean, all these things are, are additives. There's like when you dress a deity. So those of you who are pujaris, you know, you, when you're dressing, before you dress the deities, you get the outfit ready, and then you get all the ornaments that you're going to use for the outfit. So the deity is there, and then you put the clothes on the deity, and then the deity is dressed. But then, to make him even look even nicer, you put some jewelry, some earrings, and various types of ornamentations, flower garlands, and so on. And it brings out the, the, the qualities of the Lord even more. So that's the same way with kirtan. Kirtan is like dressed in the deity. <laughs> it's the same thing. Now we dress with our bhakti and the expertise in chanting is also these little ornamentations that you add onto the deity. But it, even if the ornamentations are not there, still the holy name is attractive because Krishna and his form and his name are absolutely the same. No difference. So this is what we want. We want to get a taste for that holy name. So you can pray for the taste, you can beg for the taste, you can cry for the taste, you can scream, Krishna, give me that taste. And Krishna will hear you, but then he says, all right, I'll give it to you. Well, let me see what you're going to try for, how you're going to work on it. So as you work on it, Krishna is more inclined to give it to you, if you really actually want it. We want that taste because when that taste comes, then taktva deham purna janmani naiti mameti sarjana. You're back to the spiritual world. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Any questions? Comments? Yes. Just, I'll repeat your question. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, Krishna. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. Um, my question is, um, we were he hearing uh, and practicing, like, should we try to, um, to also, we got a bunch of that here, Prabhupada is here, should we also try to talk to them, to maybe offer prayers, like, you can offer prayers. That's 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 one of the nine processes of bhakti to offer prayers. Yeah. But if you're expecting to hear them speak back to you, they're speaking back. But can you hear it? <laughs> they are. They're answering your questions, and they're also telling you. But you have to be in. You have to have that consciousness. Prabhupada said, "Krishna will speak to." devotee but not to any loafer 
point is, it's a matter of consciousness, whether you can actually uh, reciprocate. So what is that consciousness? How do Krishna we consciousness. <laughs> The more you are, you know, sometimes the deity does speak to you. Like Prabhupada chastises me, chastises me sometimes. He says, "Preach." <coughs> okay, okay, I got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so yeah, so you, you know, you go before the deity and you offer your nice prayers. How do you? What, what do you say when you get before the deity, my dear Lord? You glorify the Lord. His qualities, His names, His form, His pastimes, you glorify that. You say, my dear Lord, I've fallen into this ocean of material suffering and somehow or other, by Your mercy, I'm, I'm getting a chance to get out. So please pick me up. And then finally, after you offer nice prayers and talk about your fallen condition, then you say, how can I serve you? <laughs> How can I serve you? That's the culmination of the prayer. How can I serve? And uh, with your experience, do you think it's easier to approach Shri Prabhupada and talk to him or, or directly? Yeah, the, 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 yeah, Prabhupada's the mercy manifestation of the, the Lord. For you, he's more merciful than us, from us guys. Yeah, Prabhupada used to say, the grandfather is more merciful than the father. Yeah, just like in the family. The father may be strict, but the grandfather, he likes, he's more, you know, nicer to the children. You want to hear a story in that regard? Okay. So one devotee, he was a follower of Srila Prabhupada. He was Indian. He was in Vrindavan. And he liked to cook for... His name was Bhagaji. He liked to cook for Prabhupada. So it was Prabhupada's breakfast time. And it was a little cold. Well, sometimes Prabhupada would have grains for breakfast. Not normally, but when it was cold, he would. So it was cold. So Prabhupada had asked for halava. Prabhupada loved halava. <laughs> And so, Bhagaji, he had gotten his gift from one the Western devotee who went to America and came back with a, a jar of wheat germ. I don't know if you know what wheat germ is. It's a part of the wheat that's very, very healthy. And people take it for energy, for a fortification of the body. It's, it's good energy. So he was thinking, hmm, I'm going to make Prabhupada some wheat germ halava. <laughs> That was his idea. So he made this nice pot of wheat germ halava, and he brings it to Prabhupada. He shows it to Prabhupada. I said, what is this? And he said, Prabhupada, I know you would like this. This is wheat germ halava. It's very healthy. Prabhupada said, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> take it away so he's broken hearted <laughs> and he goes into the temple and sits before Bhakti Siddhanta's picture and starts to pray he says oh my dear you know, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati I was simply trying to please your disciple and he was not pleased oh I'm so unfortunate I'm so wretched I don't know what I so he was praying like that. And then all of a sudden he hears this voice. Hey, Bhagaji, Bhagaji, bring the halava, bring the halava. <laughs> Prabhupada's calling. <laughs> so, grandfather is more merciful than the father. So you, you have more access to Prabhupada's mercy than us guys. <laughs> Take advantage of it. <laughs> so pray to Prabhupada. Prabhupada is very kind to the disciples of his disciples. Extremely kind. To us, he's more stricter. <laughs> no. Okay. Yes, Prabhu Shasha. Hare Krishna. Uh, <clears throat> Krishna is ornamented with this Kastumba jewel and then it's like uh, this right. markation ka, ka bishra, it was in the verse Srivatsa yeah, Srivatsa is the golden hair on the chest of the Lord it's Lakshmi 
Lakshmi manifests herself as the, this golden hair. Some people say it's a white hair. Some, some places it says in the scripture it's a beautiful white hair. Other places it says it's a golden hair. But it's actually Lakshmi Devi. She's taking that form so she can stay on the chest of the Lord constantly. <laughs> and, and he's always standing on Garuda. Because it's Sometimes he rides on him. He rides on him, but when he comes in from his, you know, when he's in, in landing gear, <laughs> he stands up so everyone can see him as he comes floating in on his Garuda plane. <laughs> yeah, but he, he rides also. Krishna does whatever he wants, <laughs> just like you do, right? You do whatever you want. <laughs> Krishna does the same thing. <laughs> but sometimes we get in trouble when we do whatever we want. <laughs> Any other questions? Comments? Yes. You mentioned that the second stage is to realize uh, Krishna's form uh, in the holy name. Uh, and uh, you spoke about deity worship. And if deity worship uh, helps in this process, or is any correspondence between this? Does deity worship help in realizing Krishna in the form of his name? Um, I didn't really does this Christian does deity worship help you in chanting the holy name? Uh, may, maybe like that, yeah. 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 Prabhupada said two tracks on the transcendental train: Pancharachar Giviri, Bhagavad Dharma. And Bhagavad Dharma is Srimad Bhagavatam chanting the holy names of the Lord. Pancharachar Giviri is serving the deity, like that. So Pancharachri Viviti has been added to our process to purif to help us become purified so we can chant the holy names. And also to realize Krishna in the form of his deity also. That's Krishna standing there, that's Lord Chaitanya. So there's many devotees who absorb themselves in worship of the deity. And therefore they can also realize Krishna through their process of deity worship. Archanam is one of the nine processes of bhakti. But it must be accompanied by Harinam. <laughs> like that. Yeah. So deity worship is important. But it's not the goal. The goal is to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> Anything else? Yes, Prabhu. Archidamas and uh, Radharani's uh, pastime is identical. Somebody's talking where? Oh. Archidamas and uh, Radharani's uh, pastime is identical. Lord Chaitani and and whose pastime? Radharani's. If you say Lord Chaitanya and Krishna's pastimes are identical, then you're correct. But if you say Radharani, Radharani is Shakti. And he is Shakti Mam. So he takes the mood of Radharani and he's performing her Leela as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But he's Krishna, he's not Radharani. He's in her bhav, her, her bhakti, her devotion, but he's Krishna. But he's exhibiting his own desire to taste her Leelas through the mood of himself. So he becomes, uh, he is Krishna, he never changes from his position, but he takes on her characteristics, that's all. He's Goranga, she's Gorangi. She's golden, he's also golden. Two things, her nature and her color he takes, like that. But he's still Krishna. <laughs> Because in, in his pastimes of Lord Chaitanya, he reciprocated with his devotees in different moods. He acted as a cowherd boy. He acted as a gopi. He acted in different leelas, 
just to reciprocate his devotees who were in different mo- different rasas with him. So if he was Radharani, he he couldn't do that. So he is he is actually Krishna. <laughs> you follow? Okay. That's his mood as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, if you hear deities answer your questions, how do you know that's not your mind? Uh, what is? How do you know something is not your mind? Yeah, that answers are not coming from your mind. When you check what is coming from your mind with what the Guru says and what the Shastras say, if it's coming from Sado, Shastra, and Guru, then you can understand it is your mind revealing the truth. That's all. But if it's something else, then it's outside of these three checks Guru, Shado, and Shastra. It's something else. Like the, the mind might tell you, you're an incarnation, right? You haven't realized it yet, but you're on your way. <laughs> I mean, devotees have that. Or I am the next successor to the uh, ISKCON movement. I'm the next guru. You know. So I mean, devotees have these imaginations. Or let me see. Uh, so his name is Shiv. So if he thinks he's Shiva or an incarnation of Shiva, just because he has a name Shiv, then that's devotees do that. Sometimes we get a name and we think, hmm, yeah, man, that's me. <laughs> I'm manifested in that form. <laughs> so we sometimes we identify with the name, with the great personality who name has been given to us. So devotees uh, sometimes imagine that also. <laughs> so you know, so we have to understand what is real and what is not real through. Guru, Shadow, and Shastra. So what Prabhupada has said, what the scriptures say, what the saints say from the past, like that, then you can understand, oh, this is my mind telling me something spiritual. It's good. But most of the time the mind is giving you trouble. It's just telling you, you know, go to sleep. Can't wait till this class is over so I can have prasad. So many things the mind is telling us. So when the mind is dictating like that, then we have to switch the mind off and bring the mind to something spiritual. And so the mind is not your enemy, but it can be. The mind is not your friend, but it can be. So Krishna says in the Gita. One should elevate themselves by the mind and not degrade themselves. The mind is the friend of the conditioned soul and the enemy as well. So the mind is both. When it brings us to Krishna, it's the friend. When it takes us away from Krishna, it's the enemy. So the scriptures say you only have one enemy. That's your mind. It's taking you away from Krishna. And therefore, it's telling you not to chant. It's telling you not to associate with devotees. It's telling you that this is not right. It's giving you so many reasons why you shouldn't practice Krishna consciousness enthusiastically. That's the mind. Because the mind wants, to do, wants you to do whatever it tells you to do. You means the soul. The soul wants Krishna only. The mind wants whatever it wants. Like that. So we have to discriminate between the speak, the teachings of the mind or the dictations of the mind and what is coming from Guru, Shadow, and Shastra. So there's ways to dealing with the mind. Separate yourself from your mind and see your mind separate from yourself. And don't take what the mind tells you unless it is actually telling you what is said in, by the Guru, the Shadow, and Shastra. <coughs> <coughs> So, therefore, one has to be very diligent in listening to the dictates to the mind to make sure it's not what something that is taking away from Krishna. (laughs) 
And therefore you have to purify your intelligence. The intelligence watches the mind, but if the intelligence is of the same nature as the mind, then both of you have two problems. You got two guys against you, not just one. The mind's telling you, and the intelligence is rationalizing. Yeah, listen to that guy. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> but you, the soul, is different. You're different. You are that pure spirit soul that has a mind and intelligence that's covered by the material mind and intelligence. So we want to reveal the spiritual intelligence, the spiritual mind. And that's the process of devotional service. So gradually we keep hearing what is the truth and learning how to apply that in day-to-day -day life. We learn, oh, okay, I, sh I should chant regularly 16 rounds. Okay, I'll do that. That's, that's the intelligence speaking. And the mind says, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, there's a good movie on. You know, you haven't seen it. Everybody else says it's good. You should see it, too. <laughs> like that. Or why go to bed late? Why go to bed early? You know, I can go to bed 2 o'clock. Hey, man, it's, it's neat to be awake in the middle of the night. Nobody's around. Just me and my mind. <laughs> you got that one? Okay. So, you know, we like to associate with that guy. So, but we and the devotees say, no, no, I'll take rest and get up at good time. That way I can chant nice rounds in the morning. So that's, that's the uh, purified intelligence speaking. So this is a great, great topic, the mind, because there's so much that the mind is made out of, and how to deal with the mind is a great science. But we have to learn not to listen to the mind and listen to the words of Krishna. Does that help? Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> Uh, we hear a lot of times that uh, Guru is not the body, he is the principle of devotional service to Krishna. Mm. So how do we uh, understand that practically? How do we apply it? Just believe it. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> the Shastras say, you know, Arche Vishnu Siladi Guru Shu Nomati Vaishnava Jati Bhuti. One who sees a deity is made of stone and wood. The one who sees a devotee as coming from a particular background, a Slovenian devotee, a Croatian devotee, Western dis devotee, that's all material. The one who thinks that the spiritual master is an ordinary person, that's also. What is the result? Naraki. Naraki means their consciousness is coming from hell. So it's a strong statement. We have a way to see materially because that's our conditioned nature. Conditioned nature is something you have, you have adopted. Your spiritual nature is your real nature. So when you see through the eyes of Scripture, you're actually seeing through, your, it's through what we say realized eyes. So yes, the, the spiritual master is the principle that guides you in devotional service to Krishna. But people get attached to the body of the spiritual master and think that that's the spiritual master. But the spiritual master's words is where they should get attached to and not so much the physical form. <laughs> it's the words that we want to get attached to. <laughs> that's the difference. Okay, is there anything else before we end? Okay, so we get ready for Sri Harinam, Sankirtan, right? Gaur Pimarande. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank <laughs> you.